Today, more and more people are looking for foods that are more natural, local, healthy, and wholesome. Some people are interested in knowing more about where their food comes from and ways they can gather their own food. And most importantly, people like to have fun and enjoy themselves in the outdoors. Harvesting wild rice does all those things. Hi, I'm John Olson. I've been harvesting wild rice for 40 years, and I love everything about it. From the time of year to the physical challenge to the sharing with a good friend or a family member, everything about the harvest of wild rice becomes a quality experience. If you're new to harvesting wild rice, you may be asking, where do I go to find wild rice? What equipment do I need? How do I even harvest wild rice? Well, today I'm going to answer those questions for you. First, you'll want to find a place to go. Both the Wisconsin DNR website and the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission website have useful information on wild rice, wild rice management, and areas where you can find wild rice to harvest. You'll also want to find out when wild rice is ready to be harvested. Generally, that's early to mid-September and lasts three to four weeks on any given rice bed. Several wild rice lakes in northern Wisconsin are date regulated. That means you can't harvest from them until they are opened by the Wisconsin DNR in cooperation with tribal rice chiefs. These lakes are posted online and on site at least 24 hours in advance of opening. The Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission website is a great resource to learn when rice waters are open for harvest. You can also sign up to receive emails from the DNR when these lakes open. If wild rice lakes are not date regulated, then it is up to you to determine when the rice is ready to be harvested. These websites also contain information on the rules and regulations that you'll need to know before you head out. It's your responsibility as a harvester to understand them, abide by them, and hopefully develop a high level of respect for this special plant. Once you've found a place to harvest, you'll need some basic items to get started. First, you'll need a license to harvest. You can get that license any place where a hunting or fishing license is sold. Check the DNR's Wild Rice webpage for more information. When you're on the water, Safety should be your number one consideration. You'll want to wear a personal flotation device that's sized to fit you. In fact, the law requires that you have one for every passenger in the boat. Before heading out, make sure someone knows the location of where you intend on harvesting wild rice and when you expect to return. You'll also need a canoe or other non-motorized boat no longer than 17 feet and no wider than 38 inches. I prefer to use a standard canoe because it moves through the rice bed with little impact to the rice plants themselves. To move around the rice beds, you can use a paddle or you'll need a push pole like this one or one outfitted with a duck bill. Wild rice is easily uprooted. One thing you can do to reduce this is to remove the spring from the duck bill. It will then fold together when lifted from the bed. To knock or remove the rice from the stalks, you'll need a pair of rice sticks. Rice sticks need to be made of wood and shaped to be smooth and round. They can be made out of different materials, though most harvesters prefer a light material like cedar. A lighter type of wood will reduce damage to rice stalks and not wear you out as quickly. The kernels of rice on a single stalk will ripen at different times so you can get multiple harvests on the same rice bed. When you get to the specific water body where you'll be harvesting, you'll need to find where the rice is growing. Wild rice often grows well in waters between six inches and three feet deep with a mucky organic bottom in very gentle current. Often these areas are near the inlet or outlet of a lake, in shallow bays or along shorelines. Now that you've identified a location, purchased a license, and think the rice is ready to be harvested, it's time to head out and start the collection process. There are two main ways to harvest rice. For each, you'll need to have two people in the canoe. The difference between them is how the person harvesting the rice is seated. 
One person sits or stands in the back of the canoe and paddles or poles it through the rice bed. The other person with sticks can either sit at the front of the canoe, facing the polar, or at the back of the canoe directly in front of the polar, facing forward. Because of the way a canoe is designed, you'll need to use it in reverse, with the rear of the canoe now in the front. If you're the polar, it will take practice and good balance if you choose to stand. You might want to start out seated and paddling and work up to polling. Whichever way you choose is up to you. The more important thing is the technique you use in collecting the rice. As a harvester, it's up to you to judge the readiness of the rice and to ensure that the rice bed is not damaged. The harvester uses their sticks to gently bend the rice stalks over the canoe and then gently sweep the rice stems. Alternate from side to side like this. With time and practice, this becomes a fluid motion, always reaching out with the outside stick and then sweeping gently over the bent stems with the inside stick reversing this pattern with each side of the canoe. Ripe rice should fall off the stem quite easily. If little or no rice falls, that's a sign that it's not ready for harvest and you should not gather rice from that area. Wait a few days and you will likely find the rice ready. What you don't want to do is begin hitting the rice stems harder to encourage the kernels to drop. This will just damage the plants and you'll end up breaking the stems permanently and only collecting immature, unpalatable rice. Remember, good rice harvest leads to good rice. Try not to kink the stems when you bend them over the canoe. Gently harvesting the rice helps ensure this. Both polers and strikers should go slowly at first to perfect their techniques. Your ultimate goal should be to safely harvest ripe rice while minimizing your impact on the rice bed. You'll also want to be careful how you move or maneuver the canoe through the rice. Plan to travel through the bed in a long straight line. When you reach an area where the rice bed ends or opens up, turn around there and head back. Don't turn around in the middle of a bed. You'll needlessly damage rice that might be harvested in the future by you, others, or wildlife. Another way to help wild rice be there in the future is through conservation. Many ricers will take a bit of their harvest and spread it in a new area to begin a new wild rice bed. If you choose to do this, please be considerate of shoreline property owners. Don't plant directly in front of homes, cabins, or boat landings unless you have permission. Once you get back on shore, bag your rice using a nylon sack. This rice will need to be processed before it is ready to eat. You can dry your rice, freeze your rice, or soak it for 24 hours. Any of these steps will prevent damage that can be caused by rice worms. As you can see, there is a difference between the unfinished and finished rice. While you can process rice at home, it is very labor intensive and takes considerable time and skill. I recommend that you take your rice to a professional processor soon after harvest. You'll pay a little something for the service, but it's worth it. You don't want to botch the job and waste your rice. A good place to find out more information about processing and processors is on the internet. Or you can contact your local DNR biologist or call this number for more information. Harvesting wild rice is a great way to enjoy the natural beauty of northern Wisconsin. It's an important food source for many of our state's wildlife and is a sustainable, healthy food source for us to enjoy throughout the year as well. So if wild rice harvesting sounds appealing to you, give it a try. I hope to see you out in the water. Until then, take care.